of what's happening in Lebanon. A few days ago, there was an extensive explosion in Port Beirut, Lebanon. As a result, many lost their lives, many are injured, and many are missing to this day. Of course, the communities, the Armenians as well, are suffering. All the churches have been affected, the schools and the community at large. We ask for your prayers and we ask for your donations through the AMAA. Any contribution is very appreciated. I want to read just one verse from Psalm 42 where the psalmist, he goes through the same experiences as the Lebanese people. He asks the question, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, and, I, and yet I will praise Him, my Savior and my God. The people in Lebanon need to be rescued, need to be redempted, need to have be inspired by hope of a better tomorrow for the sake of the next generation. Let us pray together. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we are saddened by what we hear and but with what we see happening in Lebanon. On top of the inflation, unemployment, and so many economical and political difficulties. And now they have to deal with this enormous explosion. We ask that you touch each one of us to hold them in our prayers and also to send aid through the AMAA. We know that humanly speaking, we cannot face this moment. That's why we turn to you, that through your spirit, instill with us a determination to rebuild and a hope for a better tomorrow. We also ask that this worship service may be a blessing to each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Greetings in the name of our Lord and welcome to the Armenian Memorial Church virtual worship service on this Sunday, August the 9th. We welcome our sisters and brothers from the First Belmont Art Church and we pray that this worship service brings God's blessings to each of us this morning. This morning's English scripture lesson comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 25 and the reading is verses 14 to 29. Matthew chapter 25 beginning from verse 14. This is Jesus is telling a parable. He says, again, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. The one he gave five talents to another two talents and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The master, the, the man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five talents more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received one talent, went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well done. You should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. The master said, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. God does not want us, his children, to be paralyzed by fear of making mistakes. He wants us to use everything we have been given for Jesus and his church. In this sermon, I will replace the word kingdom with the word church. Let me start by asking us a question. What are you afraid of? Some of the things God, people are really afraid of are things like fear of unclosed spaces, and if you know me, that's me. Others have fear of heights, 
fear of failure, fear of dentists, fear of being afraid. In one of the most memorable moments of his political career, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt said in his first inauguration address in 1933, I quote, let me assert my firm belief that only that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Let me assert my belief that the only thing we have to fear is to fear itself. Powerful words. So this morning's message is going to center on the subject of not giving up to fear and failures. Fear of failure is something that probably all of us, at one time or another, go through. We may have a dream to do something great for ourselves, or our family, or our church, or our community. But we never act. We never act on that dream because we are afraid of failing. We may have a great idea, but we never get to develop or implement it because we are afraid of failing. When we feed our fears, our faith will starve. When we feed our faith, our fears will starve. In our text for this morning, we see that Jesus told a parable, a story, in which he, told, he dealt with the fear of failure and gave us a reminder of how God wants us, his children, to live and not live. Let me paraphrase the parable for us. The church is like a master, a master who was going to live on a trip. So he, go, he called his servants together and gave them some capital for them to grow his business. He gave different amounts of, to different servants, each according to their ability. To one servant, he gave five talents. I should say that one talent then was equal to $1,000. That's quite a sum. To another, he gave two talents. And to another, he gave one talent. Then he left on a trip. The first and second servants took a chance and invested their talents while the third servant took his one talent and hid it in the ground. After a long time, the master came back and was excited to learn what had happened with his business while he was away. The first servant came to him and told him how his five talents had gained five more. The master said, great job. I will make you a partner in my business. The second servant came and showed up the two talents had gained two more talents. Again, the master said, great job. I will make you a partner in my business. The third, the third servant came and said, well, sir, I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I kept your one talent safe and sound. Here it is. At this, the master became furious and said, if you really thought I was so hard to please, the least you could have done was to put my money in the bank and get a little interest. You have lost the opportunity to work for me anymore. Then he said to his assistant, take his one talent and give it to the one who risked the most. The question is the following. What's Jesus' point 
in telling this parable. What does Jesus teach us about the church? What are the differences between the first two servants and the third servant? What set them apart? The first two servants were willing to take risks, while the third was paralyzed by his fear of failure and it did not invest his talent. The first two focused on the privilege of working hard for their master, while the third focused on the fear to disappoint his master. So he hid his talent in the ground. The first two were industrious in putting the master's assets to work, while the third the third was lazy and afraid to fail. So what does Jesus, by telling us this parable, teach us about how God wants us to live our lives? Let me make this personal. God does not want me to be paralyzed by fear of failing. God wants me to use my talent, use my talents for Jesus and his church. God wants me to be willing to take risks. God wants me to try something in his name rather than be afraid of failing, that I will never accomplish anything. Let me take a couple of examples. First, witnessing. I can choose to say nothing because I'm not sure I will be able to answer everything. Or I can speak freely about what Jesus has done for me and done for his church. Second, serving. I can either be afraid I will miss something up or can get out and try to seize the opportunity to serve Jesus and serve his church. And finally, living. I can play it safe and live with the status quo. Do not rock the boat, or I can take a risk and try to accomplish something for Jesus and for his church. How can we, you and I, apply this to our daily lives? How can we, you and I, put this into practice? God has given us, every one of us, a talent and instructs us to invest them while we wait for Jesus' return. God has given us a passion to realize our dream for Jesus and his church. God has given each of us a different amount of quote-unquote money it could be a talent, it could be a treasure, it could be time. And our responsibility is to use this quote-unquote money, talent, or treasure, or time, to help build Jesus' church. The worst thing I could do with my life is to let the fear of failure keep me from stepping out in faith. That's why I need to starve my fears and feed my faith daily. The Bible reminds me that faith, my faith, your faith, and trust in God comes from hearing his word. This morning, God encourages us, encourages you and encourages me to at least try to do something for Jesus and his church instead of just being afraid and paralyzed or failing. I will say it again. God encourages us to at least try to do something for Jesus and his church instead of just being afraid and paralyzed of failing. It is better to try to do something for Jesus and his church and fail 
rather than be paralyzed and do nothing like the third servant who hid his talent in the ground. Maybe we tried to witness to someone, but we fumbled on our words. Maybe we tried a new job, but it did not work out. Maybe we took a chance or pursuing a dream we felt God gave us. But for some reason, we did not make the dream a reality. Let me encourage us. Encourage you as encourage myself. Do not give up. Not yet. Do not let past failures paralyze us from taking steps of faith for Jesus and his church. For God wants us, God wants you and God wants me to never, never quit. But keep trying. One more time. Keep serving. One more time. To keep taking risks in order to see God's ways took hold on us. Yes, it's not a secret. We all struggle with fear, a little less or a little more. But what's important is this, to not give in to fear, to not be paralyzed by fear, and to not stop trying or quit from doing anything, or quit using our talents that God has given us. What we all need is the courage and determination to step out in faith in God and believe that he will bless us and bless our efforts, that he will see us through eventually. God has great plans for us and for our church. We just need to use, invest, and multiply the talents he had given us that he will bring it to fruition. But this won't happen if we, you and I, out of our fears, bury our talent and do not use, invest, or multiply it. Therefore, we need to keep working and keep demonstrating our faith in God and He will reward our efforts. So let me ask us, let me ask you and let me ask myself this question. What am I doing with the talent or the talents God has given us or God has given me? There will always be fears. There will always be critics. There will always be discouragers. There is always to be feared people who will just speak and do nothing. And yes, there will be always some failures. But I am willing to invest my life in things that matter to Jesus and his church. I am willing to invest my life in things that Jesus wants me to accomplish. So I want to encourage you and encourage myself to take a risk for Jesus and his church. Take a risk by getting out of our comfort zone, by saying no to our fears and saying yes to Jesus and his church and start today. Let us do it. Let us get out of our comfort so we say no to our fears and say yes to Jesus and his church and start today. Let us count our blessings. Name them one by one. Let us count our blessings, see what God has done. Let us count our blessings. Name them one by one. Let us count our blessings. See what God has done, and it will surprise us what the Lord has done. May God continue to bless our lives and use us for Jesus and his church. Amen.
Let us join and sing the high mirror together. Zikoi Arkaetun, Yev Zorotun, Yev Park, Habitianus, Habitanits, Amen. There are Netzes, Yev Bahetzes. There are Temke by Zaratzenet Servra, Yev Vormitzesi. There are Yeres Vertzenet Servra, Yev Hahotun Datzesi. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Amen.